Show whether you're going up the web today, all in one convenient little place. We like to call it around the net. Coming in at number five today, Dateline may have gotten a little too big for their britches. Mm -hmm. You know, it's one thing to pick on the predators, which I get. It's a whole other thing to pick on the hackers. Though. Yeah, you got to leave them alone, people. Listen, over the weekend, DEF CON 15 was held, the annual hacker security conference, and apparently their security was breached by an undercover Dateline reporter who was doing a story about hacking. Now, she was outed and then escorted out of the building by security and a gang of raging mad hackers. Yeah, see, here's the thing. Like, press is actually allowed to go to the event, but they're required to wear certain credentials yeah. and not encouraged to exactly have hidden cameras. So, I, she deserves the outing. Well, yeah, I mean, you're supposed to, they said, look, you can be here, just put on a badge so we, you can identify yourself as press. But she didn't want to do it. She wanted to go undercover and do some kind of hacker scam. Yeah, or and I could, they, they had, like, a, the panelists, the guys at the podium speaking yeah. about how, well, what should we do if we find somebody amongst our ranks that's essentially yeah. a hidden press person? I can just imagine crazy, her right? freaking out in that moment as yeah. this room is going nuts over the fact that they're about to I mean, out and they were bashing pretty reporter. bad. As she's walking out, they're like, you look like Lindsay Lohan. Yeah, well, they catch her. They're, they're walking out to the car, and, like, you can hear them all breathing because they're trying to keep up yeah. with her uh, as, as she's running through the parking lot. Uh, but there's this machine gun nerd laughter that kind of happens. It's like, very Revenge of the Nerd. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> we got you. Yeah. Well, they did get her. She yeah. should go home. And they're trying to get her IM so they can chat with her online later. But here she is. This is her big move when she... You hear the nerds cackling? Yeah, I can hear that. It's just, it's kind of sad. It is sad, but I think it's awesome that they got her. Yeah, know? she deserved it. Yeah, you deserve it. Don't try to go undercover when, you know, they're giving you press pass. All right, you guys, in at number four today, who wants to hear about macroeconomics? See? All right. See, I didn't actually, think I'd get that response. No, it, some, it is more interesting than it sounds, right. actually. Jim Cramer, he's the, uh, the host of CNBC's Mad Money. He's known for his aggressive, entertaining take on stock investments. But this week, man, he brought it to a whole new level. Yeah, in this clip, Cramer takes out some pent-up anger at the Federal Reserve chairman. Now he's begging him to lower interest rates to help people with their mortgages. I have talked to the heads of almost every single one of these firms in the last 72 hours, and he has no idea what it's like out there. None! And Bill Poole has no idea what it's like out there. My people have been in this game for 25 years, and they are losing their jobs, and these firms are going to go out of business, and he's nuts! They're nuts! Yes. Yeah. I would love to see him potty train a child. A child. Or, or a puppy. Either way, because <laughs> I just imagine it's that same anger. It only gets worse. Actually, because yeah, I mean, like everybody, you know, enjoys these sort of outbursts, but this this one took a tragic turn. Mm. Actually, he has no idea. They know nothing. Wow. Wow. Oh, my my sincerest condolences yeah. to your family. It was violent. <clears throat> sorry, we had to show that. We should have warned yeah. the younger viewers. So I'm sensitive. sorry. Um, we'll probably get a lawsuit or something on that. No but one watches. Sometimes the people have to see. Nobody watches. And at number three today, oh, my mom we've got a, a series of videos of some new StarCraft footage that snuck out of BlizzCon. This is, now, this is very cool. Now, GameSpot posted two extended videos on their site, and even though Blizzard said the footage was still unpolished, it looks pretty great to us. Now, the first video showed off the Terran faction, some of their updated units, technologies, and buildings. Now, the second video highlighted some of the single-player campaigns. Yeah, here you get to see some of the customization options mm -hmm. uh, for the units, as well as what the game is going to look like on the rare chance that you're not spending, you know, entire weeks in multiplayer deathmatch. Yeah. So, there you have it. It looks pretty awesome. Now, you guys, in at number two today is the death of the titular character of Lonely Girl 15. <sighs> Look, let's be honest. The whole reason we tuned in in the first place was because it was a hot chick on a webcam. Yeah. You assumed that, you know, by episode 13, she'd be hurting for ratings, she'd maybe get naked. But <laughs> then we found out it was a scripted show, and then yeah. it turned into this weird cult mystery thing with yeah, weird blood, magic blood, yeah. and it, whatever. It all debuted on June 16, 2006, in a video titled, First Vlog, Dorkiness Prevails. <laughs> and then a year later, you get this. Oh my god, yeah, that's Bree. Oh my god. Oh my god, she's dying. Oh my god, she's dying. I gotta go. Sarah, you cannot go in there alone. Where are Jonas? I Daniel. Daniel. Go in there. Daniel, hurry! Oh my God, hurry! Hurry! Oh my God, hurry! Hurry! Hurry, Daniel, hurry! Daniel, hurry! Daniel, hurry! Daniel, hurry! Daniel, hurry! Daniel, hurry! Daniel, hur
our 15 minutes is up. <laughs> Get here now. I'm so scared. Could you any of me acting? Uh... Yeah, I, 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 I didn't think, well, think Lonely Girl could get any hotter. Now that she's actually dead, it, it does it for me. But, oh, man. but I'm just thinking, like, man, they really like a year. Okay, that's where they... well, to, to be fair, there were hints in the finale that the mysterious cult will be tracking more girls who had the same healing blood that Brie had, which you're excited about, whatever the yeah. hell that means. Um, anyway, there's more episodes on the way with some other chick that's pretty And to be hopefully 12. the new chick gets naked on the webcam. Yeah. Can anybody? Well, okay. <laughs> well, here's the thing is that it's kind of a lame way to end it, and but you, I, we were talking. I didn't even know people were watching it. You stopped watching it once you figured. Once, once you were I confirmed. knew it was fake, yeah. and I kind of got it. And I got you know, I'm yeah. good. I'm good. But you know, hundreds of thousands of people still watch. Yeah, so. but they also watch your podcast too, where you're flipping on butter, and eating pizza that kills people. That's true. Now, Lonely Girl was one of the biggest phenomenons ever to hit the internet, but today, there's an even more important story out there. That's right. And at number one, there's a new sport out there brought to us by Speed TV on brightcove.com, and it's maybe the greatest thing we've ever seen. Yeah, this is number one, by the way. This yeah. is beating out everything today, and because for a good reason. Because number one beats out everything. Well, it's, yes, that's how it works. By the numbers. I guess know. there's this thing called motorcycle rodeos. Yes. Okay, they go on, and they always end with an event. Mm -hmm. uh, well, there's a popular competition that yeah. takes place. Uh, it's called the Weenie Bite. Robert Tabor and Stacy Case. Look at me, she's got her game yeah, face she, on. She's she definitely set. She's coming right after it. A lot of mustard on that dog. Oh, man, there's definitely a technique to this competition, and it looks like she has it down. One more time in slow-mo. Scott, it's all yours. <laughs> I was supposed to analyze this. You see that? Yeah, I That was like it. out of the greatest catch. It was That awesome. was like some planet Earth shark bite okay, motion going so, on so there. Okay, so Kevin knows this. So I'm going to explain to you guys. The sport is simple. There's a driver, there's a girl in the back, and there's a dangling hot dog <laughs> dipped in mustard waiting to see who can chew the most off in one single bite. Well, and this is from last year's event, but I, like, I think I get the appeal here. I can, yeah. look, at, look at that right there. The, the Whoa! Mouth, the mouth-eye coordination is phenomenal. These are athletes, wow. Olivia. This is remarkable. That's Ninja yeah. Warrior type stuff right that there. That is Ninja Warrior stuff. Now, you guys, don't even think that these women aren't serious competitors. Here is the words of the champion after winning once again. All right, Stacy Case, you are the big wiener. I guess so. <laughs> now, that takes a lot of practice. Don't take it the wrong way, but, I mean, how many times do you try that? Well, this year, if I take nationals, it'll be my fifth national title with the champion. He makes my job easy. God. Yeah. Oh, did not want to hear that. Um, <laughs> motorcycle rodeos, live yeah. TV, raw competition, raw meat. Mm -hmm. The sport is surely going to catch on. And I think... Yeah, I think it's going to... I mean, it seems fun. I like how they actually make it like a real sport. They're doing, you know, commentary on yeah, it. Yeah, and they funny. got the fancy yeah. graphics and everything. It's but definitely I just, funny. I just think that uh, it's time for a changing of the guard. Oh, okay. You know, That's maybe a like new you. national champ. How does... How does national wiener biting champ Olivia Munn sound? Huh? Oh! Anybody? Yeah. Can we can we bring down the dog, what? please? What? Actually, yeah, you can get anything from the ceiling if you just point and ask for it. <laughs> okay, first of all, now, this is not a regulation no, dog, well, so you're no, raw dog really, in here. It's really thick. Huh? Well, thank you. Uh, let's move this out of the way. This is the Wait, turkey dog variety. Wait, what do you expect me to do? Uh, well, I thought you'd just raw bite it. Now, I asked for a tricycle. Apparently, we don't have that in the budget, but we did get the solo cup full of mustard. Oh, so my God. So let's just a ceremonial dipping. There we go. There's a little drip do on fun. it. Don't worry about a that. That'll head be on a little it. runoff. All right, raw dog it, man. Now you have to have some what? Some inertia. You're not. You're kidding. Pretend right? you're on the back of the motorcycle. <laughs> I'm thinking you're getting to the string. Okay, wait. Hold on. I don't want to bite off the string. No, no, no. You'll be fine. Okay. Gonna, I don't. I think the string is the least of the worries here. <laughs> oh my God. That's not going to be the career ender. All right, ender. so I'm on a. I'm on a bike. I'm on the back of a. Yeah, you're on the back. Bike. Oh, yeah. Okay, so you'll be right. in front of the. You'll okay, be here we go, bike. and Ready? we're riding. All we're right. riding. Uh, let it be mine, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. Raw dog it. No! Oh, oh. Now you get. You did not keep forward motion. That is a. You did. You lost forward motion. Mustard chug. Mustard chug it. Come on, get it down. Okay, don't. All right. <laughs> Olivia Mon, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. That was, that was prop humor. All right. We look forward to this year's competition, which takes place in a few weeks. And better watch out, Wait, folks. She is training hard. I have a hard. question. I have a question. Yeah. Was that good TV? I think it was great TV. It was great TV. And it's going to be even greater YouTube and even greater MySpace animated I don't think that, I don't think I went far enough. Huh? I, mean, I was disappointed in figuratively myself. Figuratively or literally? Because we have a kielbasa sausage dangling if you want to get that down. <laughs> Can we get the kielbasa? No. no. Okay, all right, never mind. Let's move it on. For more virals, head on over to g4tv.com slash around the net and sign up for the Around the Net podcast. It'll haunt your dreams. Well. Mustard chug? Oh, good. Right now, it's time for the only news you need to know. Here's Layla Kaylee and the feed headlines. Did you? Mustard?
Thanks, guys. Here's what's coming up in the feed. First, we'll have all the latest World of Warcraft news to come out of BlizzCon. Plus, we'll tell you why the internet was stunned over the Lonely Girl 15 finale. And we'll have all the latest news on projects with Batman and Spider-Man. It's all coming your way in just a few minutes. But first, back to you guys. Now, Western Judeo-Christian morality tells us that we're supposed to delay gratification. Mm -hmm. And it seems like video game publishers, they're taking note. Yeah, many next-gen A-list titles have been delayed, and we recently added the uber-anticipated Grand Theft Auto 4 to that list, and fans are outraged. Re release dates are shifting like crazy, and we'll talk about all of them in the loop. But we want to know what you think about this latest delay with our poll question. Will GTA 4 be well worth the wait? Vote on our website, g4tv.com slash AOTS, or text your vote to G4TXT, it's 44898, to vote and register for AOTS. Live news alert. I just really enjoy working with you. I, you're such a pleasure, sweetheart. You guys, this show is going to push its release date until next year, but we do need to take a quick break and gear up for what's in store. So stay right there. We're just getting started. Here's what's coming up on today's Attack of the Show. From Spore to GTA 4, game delays are on the rise, and we're wondering what the hell is keeping them out of our hands. In the loop. With a bitchin' color touch screen and the ability to work with up to 15 devices, could this be the perfect universal remote? Gadget Prod answers. Plus, you'll be thinking you're James Bond after we introduce you to the best damn sites for spy gear on Blogwatch. Danger's our middle name when the attack comes back. Around the Net is brought to you by Old Spice. Experience is everything. Hey guys, what's up? I'm um, just wondering, uh, when Rockman comes out, what position will you be most excited to play? Guitar, bass, drums, or vocalist? Bass, baby! Oh, yeah! You can do that on Guitar Hero. Nobody cares about bass guitar. No. No one ever wants to play bass. People who no. can't, who aren't talented enough to play guitar, play bass. Well, when we were doing, uh, when we were doing uh, the rock band for E3, I remember that was the last thing. Of and course I think it, was. it was. Like, like I remember it was Joel was like, I guess I'll do. Yeah, I guess bass, I'll, I'll I play guess. the three low notes over and yeah, over again. Yeah, because you jumped into drums right away. You didn't let anybody else touch drums. You're no. like, I got it. I'm it's gonna... my domain. I gotta protect it. I'm right. totally psyched for the drums. They're awesome, but actually vocals, like I can't sing, but, but I'll try. Well, everybody knows that I pretty much have an amazing voice. Oh, voice of an angel. Voice of an angel. Mm -hmm. With clipped rings tumbling to the earth, screaming out of fear of the impending doom. Some people enjoy that. I'm just saying, yeah, voice of an angel. Thank you. All right, thanks for the question. Yeah. What Did you answer it? What are you going to play? You want to sing? I would think that I would sing, but apparently okay. I guess not. I guess <laughs> not, I'm not. Not in my good... apartment. They don't make enough captain for that. All right, well, hey, I'll drink captain, and mm -hmm. then I'll sound great. We gotta rock the headlines, though. Oh, well, let's do it. It's the time for the only news you need to know. Here it is, in the feed. Thanks, guys, and happy Monday. I'm Layla Kaylee, and it's time to start the feed. World of Warcraft fans spent this weekend glued to their computer monitors, and not because they were just playing WoW. Details of the new expansion, Wrath of the Lich King, emerged during this weekend's BlizzCon convention. The upcoming add-on opens a new continent, increases the level cap to 80, and adds the Death Knight hero class. Little is known about the new class except that it will be able to summon minions and will be open to all races. BlizzCon also had a panel with Legendary Pictures, the company working on the World of Warcraft movie. The movie will be live action, set about a year before the events in World of Warcraft, and told from the Alliance perspective. Legendary Pictures is aiming for a 2009 release date. A few states away from BlizzCon, the 2007 QuakeCon delivered some hefty fan service. Its software CEO, Todd Hollinshead, announced the development of a free ad-supported version of Quake 3 Arena called Quake Zero. The game will run in web browsers on both PC and Mac. It is also releasing all of their software titles for download on both Steam and the Xbox Live Arcade. Not content with re-releases, it also announced their highly anticipated new game, Enemy Territory Quake Wars, which will be in stores in North America on October 2nd. Can't wait. In a summer full of boring TV shows, the most shocking season finale was found on the internet. On Friday, MySpace Video released the Lonely Girl 15 finale in 12 parts, 
airing one part per hour. In the final installment, fans were stunned to discover that Brie is no more. After 260 episodes, Jessica Rose has left the infamous series. But don't worry, it's far from over. The series without its star will continue this week, and the Kate Modern spin-off produced by Bebo.com is also on the horizon. And in superhero news, we've got the latest on two of our favorite costume stars. A Batman animated anthology in the vein of The Animatrix is said to be in the works and would fill the gap between Batman Begins and The Dark Knight. History of Violence writer Josh Olsen and writer-director David Goya are said to be involved. Meanwhile, Spider-Man 3 will make its DVD debut on October 30th, available in both Blu-ray and standard editions. Sony plans to offer all three films in a box set for the high-definition format, so now you have a reason to buy them all over again. Is there something really wrong with the Xbox 360? On the heels of a price cut this week, Microsoft has announced an online option to fix broken 360s at service.xbox.com. Again, that's service.xbox.com. This new repair site lets you register your Xbox, schedule repairs, and track the status of the repair all online. The new site also lets you create warranty repairs and even gives you a $5 discount for out-of-warranty service. We'll have further updates on the health of the 360 as it becomes available. And finally, a new world record has just been broken. Panasonic raced an electric car on Saturday that was fueled by just 192 AA batteries and it reached record-breaking speeds, believe it or not. At a racetrack in Japan, the car sustained an average speed of 65.8 miles per hour, reaching a top speed of 75.8 miles per hour. And for a car running on standard dry cell batteries, that's pretty impressive. Well, that's it for today, but don't worry, the feed doesn't stop here. Get all the news you need to know anytime at g4tv.com. I'm Layla Cayley, and you've just been fed. Back to you guys. Thanks, Layla. Now it's the time, Technofile. Welcome back to the show. Earlier we asked you, will GTA 4 be worth the wait? Well, according to our carjacking scientists at the G4 Laboratories, 65% of you said yes, it will be worth the wait. Let's go to Kevin, who has a five-star wanted rating, and you don't even know, want to know what he's done. It's bad. No, no. The other hot dogs are still missing, by the way. <laughs> the next gen is here, my friends. All the consoles are out, but where? Where are all the big franchises? Well, 2008, actually, if we're lucky. The next generation of gaming is here, with a slight delay. From Will Wright's Ambitious 4 to the latest title to fall into gaming purgatory, Take Two's Grand Theft Auto 4. Delays seem to be more commonplace, but it doesn't end there. Sony's lair for the PlayStation 3 will not be in stores this month as originally planned, and Midway's black site Area 51 has now been banished to November. Some industry analysts defend these delays, saying that development for these sophisticated modern consoles is more difficult than ever, and that the PlayStation 3 is the suspected main culprit behind the Grand Theft Auto 4 delay. As one of the few titles slated to be released on time, Microsoft's Halo 3, due in September for the Xbox 360, stands to be the big winner this fall. Are today's next-gen games too difficult to produce? Or do developers simply want their games to be perfect? Put down that hot coffee. It's the loop. My guest tonight, Rebecca Swanner, senior gaming editor for Penthouse Magazine and contributing editor for Joystick.com. Kevin Kelly joins us. Welcome to The Loop, everybody. Let's start off with Grand Theft Auto 4. I mean, the delay seemed to come out of nowhere. It sent shockwaves through the industry last week. Rebecca, who's to blame for this? Well, I know some analysts have been blaming the PS3 because it's supposedly it's a difficult system to develop for in contrast and comparison with the 360. But I think some of it might also have to do with strategy. I mean, this way, GTA 4 isn't going head-to-head -head with some of the hottest games that are coming out, Halo 3, Mass Effect. Unfortunately, now they'll be pinned against Metal Gear Solid. Very true. But, I mean, people were expecting Grand Theft Auto 4 to, I mean, to, to be one-third of all hol holiday game sales, really. And, yeah. and Kevin, now Take-Two stock is down 16%. I mean, does that seem really that strategic? No, it doesn't seem strategic to me because we just saw this game at E3, and while what they showed off wasn't that impressive, it was not very smooth and there were no people in it, they were reiterating the fact that they were going to be shipping this game on time. And here it is just a few weeks, two, three weeks later, and this is a big delay. This is the biggest one out of all of them, and it's really going to affect uh, how this game is perceived. And when it comes out, nobody knows for sure right now. Well, I don't necessarily think that's a good move for Rockstar. I mean, I think that, I still think, though, that it might have been part of their strategy, though, if they 
sort of take a step back and realize that their, you know, their sales are going down. And with the Manhunt 2, you know, being delayed indefinitely, mm -hmm. I think, you know, they're really sort of well, Ultimately, I think it hurts Microsoft the most because they were hyping their hat trick of video games for this holiday season, Halo 3. Madden 08, and then GTA 4, now it's going to be down to two. And there's a big group of people out there who don't like the Madden, they don't like Halo, and now they're not going to have the third big tier title to choose from. But you don't think that'll boost sales? I mean, for people who have, you know, only so much money to spend, you don't think that might I boost sales? I don't think sales? there's people that were going to buy GTA 4 and not buy Halo that will now buy Halo because it's delayed. I think it's just going to hurt them in the end. What about the Mass Effects and the Bioshocks of the world, though, Kevin? Here, I mean, it, it, could there be some strategy by saying, hey, just hold off, we don't need to compete with these guys? There could be a Halo effect, if you will, of those uh, other two titles <laughs> getting more holiday sales especially uh, Mass Effect and Bioshock, which are two of the most talked about ones right now, with people not spending their money somewhere else. This well, is going to be another Kevin, what about, what about what Rebecca said regarding the fact that the, the PlayStation 3 might be causing the slowdown? I mean, even at QuakeCon this weekend, John Carmack was saying that, hey, look, the, the PlayStation 3 is the console that seems to slow down yeah. development the most. I mean, could this become a larger issue for Sony? It definitely could, and it's definitely, the PS3 is definitely affecting this. Not only these titles that we're talking about today, but uh, Ghost Recon 2 was delayed on the PS3. Colin McRae's Dirt was delayed. Skate was del is delayed. And in some cases, it's only by a couple of weeks, but it still shows that developers are not quite there yet when it comes to the PS3. People have also had a little more lead time with the Xbox 360. It's been out longer. People are more familiar with the development kit, but developers like John Carmack have been complaining about how hard it is to develop these games on the PS3. And I think that's going to really hurt Sony in the end. For example, I mean, what have they got, you know, coming out really big this holiday season without GTA 4? They're left with, what, Heavenly Sword and yep. Ratchet and Clank? Yeah. Well, in, in fact, recently, Lair was even delayed as well. And then there was, of course, Black Sight, Medal of Honor. Those have all been delayed as well. I mean, mm -hmm. Re Rebecca, let, let me ask you, is, is this generation just really that hard to develop for? Or are we seeing really sloppy planning on the part of these, these publishers? I think my, what might be coming into play is that maybe the marketers who are marketing these games are putting out unreal dates for unreal release dates for these games. And they haven't, maybe they haven't been consulting with the developers and what you know, real, how much time it really takes to develop a next-gen game. That's definitely true. Yeah, there seems to be a pressure to release information and a title and a date right away because everyone wants to hype up this next new release, but then the developers are kind of left in the cold, like, well, we're not sure if we can deliver by this time, and that's what we're seeing right now with these delays. It's ultimately going to hurt the gamer at home who doesn't have anywhere to spend their money. I mean, maybe these were, you know, the dates that were going to come out anyway, you know, even if the marketers hadn't said... You know, well, let's talk about who is harmed really quickly, and then we'll make it kind of the final word here as we wrap things up. Start with you, Rebecca. I mean, should the publishers actually bother with these release dates if they can't keep them? I mean, uh, Kevin said it's hurting the gamer at home, but, but how, who else is it hurting and how? I mean, I think it's sort of hurting everybody. I think it's definitely pissing off gamers, and I think that it's, you know, as we've seen with Take-Two stocks, it's hurting them too. But I think that um, they've got to put out some release date. Otherwise, you know, there's not going to be a hype machine. Right. Mm -hmm. Kevin, what do you think? I, I kind of agree, although the fact that the uh, GTA 4 is delayed, it might hurt Take-Two right now in the, in the, you know, the close term, but that's still going to sell millions of copies when it comes out. People want that game, and the fact that it's delayed, I don't think ultimately will hurt it. It hurts right now, and it gives sort of a negative reputation to, to Sony and the PS3 if they're, cause they're kind of taking the blame as the, uh, you know, the scapegoat for this delay. But ultimately, I think it hurts the people that have been so excited about this. When a game gets delayed, they kind of start to you know, get disappointed about that. Sure, they but if, if you're holding Take-Two stock, hang on to it a little while longer, basically. Oh, sure, yeah. Maybe I mean, buy a little bit more now that, that arrow's been going down on the ground. Yeah, right? they'll be fine, they'll be fine. All right, I want to thank my guests, Rebecca and Kevin, for joining us. Thank you guys for keeping us in thank the you. loop. Thank right you. now, we're going to go over to Olivia, who's ready to drain your wallet faster than a crippling drug habit. <laughs> Thanks, Kev. Let's face it, nothing makes us feel too one. Got it?